Welcome to Daily Office Devotions. I'm Reggie Kidd, Dean of the Cathedral Church of St. Luke in Orlando, Florida. If you're enjoying this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm glad to be with you on this Wednesday of the seventh week of Easter. Desolation straight ahead. Isaiah foresees desolation for Jerusalem at the hand of an invading army. He foretells exile to an alien land for the city's residents. But for the people of Yahweh, destruction is never the last word. In today's daily office, Isaiah looks into the future in both Isaiah chapter 4, the reading, and Isaiah chapter 60, the canticle. In Isaiah chapter 4, Isaiah looks beyond desolation and exile to prophesy the rising of a beautiful and glorious branch that is a Messiah from the line of Jesse. Isaiah sees proud survivors finding the land fruitful once again. In this same chapter, Isaiah sees fire cleansing the metaphorical filth of Jerusalem's streets, followed by a protective cloud hovering over the city's Mount Zion. Like the cloud that accompanied Israel in the Exodus, this cloud gives shade from heat and refuge and shelter from storm and rain. In Isaiah chapter 60, the prophet calls upon his hearers to arise from the brokenness of their desolation as the glory of Yahweh shines upon them and upon their city once again. On that day, the branch of Yahweh will appear. Violence, ruin, and destruction will be no more. Nations will stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Here is a preview of God's plan for humankind. Here is hope, not merely for Israel, but for the world. These prophecies received partial fulfillment when, at the behest of Persia, Israel enjoyed a return to the land following the Assyrian exile and Babylonian captivity. Ezra and Nehemiah undertook to rebuild the city's defensive wall and the temple, although not at the scale of the original city. But, say the prophets of their day, this is reason enough to celebrate God's kind favor and faithfulness. For who dares make light of small beginnings? Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 in the New English Translation. The lesser rebuilding is itself a gift, a promise of something greater and of God's continued care for his people. Centuries later, the branch, Jesus Christ, son of God and son of Jesse, appears. And he said to the demons, go. Matthew chapter 8, verse 32. As the reading in Matthew demonstrates, he comes with power over all demonic forces, as well as over nature, subject to corruption as it is, Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 23. God loves people. He loves each of us so much that he sent his only and eternal son to become one of us and to reconcile us, to restore us to himself. Although damaged by the fall in Adam's sin, creation, and we ourselves await restoration and a greater rebuilding. With arms outstretched on a cross, Jesus offers himself as the means of that purgation of sin to which Isaiah alludes here in Isaiah 4.4, a concept which he develops at length in his song of the suffering servant. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all especially Isaiah 53, 6. Jesus offers himself not just to provide a perfect atonement for sin, but also, therefore, to secure a future of hope and glory for those who trust in him. Following the cross come the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. Then on the first Pentecost, as if in direct fulfillment of Isaiah's visions, God's glory cloud descends upon Mount Zion distributing tongues of fire, empowering the proclamation of a gospel that brings refining repentance and vivifying faith to wayward hearts. Paul's letter to the Ephesians demonstrates the power of that gospel as he urges Christ's followers to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. 
bear with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Paul is confident that Christ's grace is strong enough to empower his church to build itself up in love. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. As that happens, the church becomes the visible manifestation of Pentecost power on the earth. God rebuilds not a physical city with defensive walls, but an outward-facing spiritual city, taking the good news of his love to the nations. Ours is a time for hope once more. Hope in the face of invading armies. Hope in the face of a poisoned political atmosphere. Hope in the face of revelations about human trafficking. Hope in the face of gun violence and intractable racial economic and ethnic cleavages, hope in the face of opioid addiction, hope in the face of personal failings and disappointments. The prophet Isaiah speaks hope even now, perhaps especially now. We can know that God will not abandon us ever. He loves you and me and he will not abandon us. Be blessed this day.